Today's lecture will be about pneumonia and in this lecture we will be talking about the management of community acquired pneumonia. The management of hospital acquired pneumonia will be talked about in a separate lecture. So to begin with what is pneumonia? Well, WH defines pneumonia as an acute respiratory infection affecting the parenchyma of the lung and because of this it affects oxygenation. Pneumonia can be classified in several different ways um, via etiology, um, which includes infection, aspiration, lipoid pneumonia when somebody aspirates a lipid substance, for example, and it can be classified depending on location, community, or hospital acquired. Method of spread is also a common way to classify pneumonia, and this includes bronchopneumonia lobular pneumonia and interstitial pneumonia where the infection occurs outside of the alveoli. Radiographically, a pneumonia can also be cla classified as atypical round cavitating and hemorrhagic. So we'll be focusing on community acquired pneumonia and hospital acquired pneumonia will be discussed in a separate lecture. This is when pneumonia occurs 48 hours in hospital. Um, it, if it develops when somebody is intubated 48 hours in hospital, then the pneumonia is classified as a ventilator associated pneumonia, often coming from biofilms um, that developed in the apparatus. The scale of pneumonia, well, it's a low, uh, low respiratory tract infections as a whole, um, while the fourth most common cause of death worldwide. Um, as you can see, half of pneumonia-related deaths occur in patients over 64. is a big killer in uh, the elderly. In the UK, annual incidence is between 0.5 to 1% of CAP, and hospitalization is required in up to 40% of patients. Pathogenesis, so how exactly does pneumonia occur? Well, um, it usually occurs because of an invasion and overgrowth of pathogens. We have defense mechanisms but when these defense mechanisms are overrun, um, we develop the pneumonia or whether if the pathogen is especially virulent. Common route of entry is microaspiration into the lower speech tract. Pneumonia can also be caught by spread from an infected area in the body. And this infection in the lungs can also spread to other parts of the body leading to complications. Okay. What organisms cause pneumonia? Well, the organisms that are in blue are known as atypical organisms. They cause atypical pneumonia or walking pneumonia, and that presents differently to the standard pneumonia um, and includes um, so often vague symptoms. Now, the most common bacteria causing um, pneumonia is uh, strep pneumonia, and um, this is often facilitated by influenza virus, for example. Legionella, Haemophilus, Mycoplasma, uh, Chlamydophilia, uh, Coxiella, Staph aureus, and Pseudomonas can also cause pneumonia. Pseudomonas is often of great concern in immunocompromised patients and also those patients with cystic fibrosis and existing bronchiectasis. So, viruses can also cause the pneumonia. Uh, CMV, influenza, and the coronavirus, SARS virus, as it was known, and uh, the, also the Middle Eastern syndrome virus. So here's a picture of uh, PCP. It's a um, infection that occurs uh, quite well. It occurs quite commonly in immunocompromised uh, patients, such as um, those with HIV, and um, Cryptococcus is another fungi which can cause um, uh, pneumonia. So what are the signs and symptoms of pneumonia? Well, you develop a productive cough and often the sputum color of this cough can uh, give hints to what um, organism is causing this. Strep pneumonia typically uh, has a rust colored sputum. Pseudomonas gives a green sputum, that's very characteristic. Klebsiella gives red currant jelly. Anaerobes usually give foul smelling sputum. So a patient can also present with shortness of breath and decreased exercise tolerance because of the compromise of the lung tissues such as consolidation. Now the um, apologies for the spelling mistake. The coarse, crack, coarse crackers can also be 
uh, heard. Fever is often present. Chest pain may be pleuritic in nature, especially if there is a proval effusion going on. And uh, in low brilliant pneumonia, uh, once it progresses to a stage, um, you can also, um, on examination of the patient, hear dullness to percussion. Bronchial breathing is common, and tactile vocal firmness is increased over areas of consolidation. This is because sound travels better through um, the consolidated uh, fluid filled area of the lung as opposed to a normal healthy lung. So investigations, what do we do to uh, investigate pneumonia? Well, chest x-ray is very common to be really great for managing pneumonia. It may show a plural effusion. This would take, um, be a parapneumonic um, exudative um, effusion due to the inflammation and lobular consolidation. Um, however, um, when a patient presents, um, it can, the x-ray can be normal and um, it's best to repeat this x-ray in a few days time to see if there's any prog progression of the condition. So here we have a proval effusion on the left side and this looks reasonably extensive and may present with proritic pain in the patient. Here we have lobular pneumonia as you can see on the right hand side um, the middle lobe um, the mid lower lobe apologies um, seems to be um, shadowed um, white shadowed out and this shows that um, the area is consolidated and here's another x-ray and this shows um, diffuse pneumonia you can see it's spread all over um, the chest of this patient however um, atypical pneumonia can also be found concentrated in the hilar regions that's also a finding in atypical pneumonia investigations so how do you identify what organisms causing it? Well, commonly what we do is we take the sputum, gram staining, to identify the organism. Um, we often take blood cultures as well, and there are also specific diagnostics tests we use to analyze um, which possible organism it does. We need to know this because it guides our management. Now complications of pneumonia. Sepsis is a common complication in the elderly, uh, elderly frail, and those who are immunocompromised. Um, standard sepsis six guidelines is to give high flow oxygen, blood culture, IV antibiotics, initiate IV fluid resuscitation, measure lactate, and measure urine output hourly. Put them on a catheter. Other complications of pneumonia include the empyema, lung abscess meningitis. So management. Curb 65. What is Curb 65? Well, it's a score we use to guide our management of the condition. Um, should we um, take a patient in? Should we treat them in the outpatients? Um, how should we manage this? Well, Curb 65 um, stands for confusion, urea, respiratory, um, BP, and age over 65. Is a useful tool to use. Um, a patient scores one point if each of these are positive and with those points we have guidelines so zero to one you treat as an outpatient you can give them antibiotics to take at home they should be fine. Two consider a short stay in hospital and watch very closely as an outpatient and three to five is more more serious requires hospitalization and depending on clinical picture may even be admitted to the ICU. However, the school is a guide. Often young patients with severe pneumonia will present with little change in factors uh, measured by the score. Uh, I encountered a patient myself, uh, a very young patient. He had severe pneumonia, but his CURB 65 score was um, quite normal, actually. It's not uh, absolutely normal. So it often depends on the clinical picture. His chest x-ray, however, did not say he was normal at all, really. Okay. <clears throat> so management, how do we manage um, CAP? Well, I've taken these guidelines from the Bart's Health, uh, one of the largest um, trusts in the UK. Um, mild CAP is usually um, taken care of using amoxicillin 500 um, milligrams TDS for five to seven days. If the patient is allergic, we use doxy and um, to um, manage mo moderate CAP, we add a macrolide, usually the cyclovifomycin 500 milligrams BD. Uh, an alternate can be vancomycin and clavifomycin. 
management of severe CAP, we jump straight to call amoxicam IV 1.2 grams TDS and clarifomycin 500 milligrams BD. Now, um, just as note, when a patient has is has CAP, they can often um, get worse while they're in hospital and contract other infections. These other infections have to be um, dealt with in separate ways by addition of further antibiotics. And um, this um, specific topic will be discussed in a future lecture about um, hospital acquired pneumonia. So that's it for pneumonia. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. And thank you for listening.